On the 182nd chapter of the Layman's Journal, we'll be talking about Unspeakable, an Amazon Prime movie short that came out about six years ago, about a man wrongly accused of a horrific crime. Shout out to Manosphere Highlights Daily. He had an interesting take on the movie, and I thought I'd give my perspective as well, as discussing messaging in entertainment media is what I do. So without further ado, let's get it. <laughs> So Unspeakable is the story about a man named Danny who's accused of having an inappropriate relationship with his girlfriend's 11-year-old daughter named Katie. The movie is told from the perspective of Joe, Danny's live-in girlfriend and Katie's mom. It also includes Joe's ex-husband, Dez, and their son, Ben, but his role is insignificant. The movie is only 45 minutes long and spans a weekend. And it begins with Katie seeing Danny in the buff as he comes out of the shower. Joe's a town. so mean. I'm fine, I'll get it myself. Mom? Danny. Are you okay, Katie? It's fine. <sighs> what are you like? Get me a towel. <laughs> Later, we see Joe taking Katie and Ben to school with Katie looking up at Danny in the window. So right away in the first two scenes, we're led to believe that something improper is going on. And as Joe drives into school, we see Katie sulking as she looks out of the window. She seems depressed. But things get interesting when Joe receives an anonymous text message alleging that something is going on between Katie and Danny. Joe calls the texter back, but no one answers. Then she tries to see if it's a number that she recognizes, if it belongs to anyone she knows, and it doesn't. As time goes on, it begins to weigh on Joe, and she begins to question Danny's innocence. Joe then asks a friend for legal advice. That this person's done something to a, a young girl. Right, I see. Look, you'll be aware that regardless of the substance of the accusation, this type of thing is taken really seriously by the police. Your friend needs a good criminal solicitor, Joe. And the conversation leaves her unsettled, which then leads to her taking inventory. She starts going through Katie's things. She begins to have flashbacks and wondering if she's ignored any warning signs. How old is Danny? Why do you want to know his age? Because he looks a lot younger than you and Dad. <laughs> Katie Shepherd, you are so mean! <laughs> what about you? Do you like him? Yeah. What? Nothing. Oh, come on, I know you. What are you thinking? Danny then comes home and Joe starts going through his phone and she sees a text from Katie, but we don't see what it says. Joe then begins to poke around, asking Danny open-ended questions to gauge his reaction. Nothing's happened between you and Katie, has it? She said something. But she gleans nothing from his responses. Later they have dinner, and Joe confides in her best friend Sally. She shows her the texts and confesses her doubts. Later that night as she was sleeping, Joe gets a link and a phone number from the anonymous texter. It's a hotline for exploited children. And the next day she calls the hotline for legal advice. And she talks to an agent who's concerned about what she's saying and urges her to do something more. But Joe doesn't go through with it. Later on, Joe confronts Danny. She shows him the texts. And he's upset and denies doing anything wrong. Joe suggests they call the police. But Danny says no, it could ruin his career. Because he's a doctor who's in contact with children every day. Joe then asks Danny if he's ever touched Katie. Did you touch her? <laughs> Joe then goes to Dez's house because it's his weekend with the kids and she wants to talk to Katie. Now Dez has a clue about what's going on. He knows what Joe is upset about and he wants to talk to Katie with Joe. But Joe insists on doing it alone. 
So Joe talks to Katie to see what's wrong with her, why she's been acting so strange. And Katie says that she's upset with her father, Dez, because he keeps asking her questions about Danny, but she gave no indication that Danny has done anything to her. And while they're talking, Dez barges in, right as Joe is going to ask Katie if Danny has ever touched her, and Katie runs off. Joe and Dez begin to argue, and Dez begins to tell Joe about how he doesn't like having Danny around his kids how he doesn't like him living with his kids and lecturing her about her choices. Oh, yeah, I don't know him and he suddenly moved in. I'm concerned, Joe. I'm her dad. She's suddenly living with a complete stranger, a bloke. She didn't have any choice in that. None of us did. You know, we don't... Who's living with my kids? But Joe starts thinking. She's more focused on what Katie told her about Dez, her father, and she starts to put it all together. And there it is, Dez is the culprit. He's the one that's been sending out the anonymous texts alleging Danny was doing something improper with Katie. Dez and Joe fight again and Joe storms off. In the next scene, Joe and Danny reconcile, but you can tell there's still turbulence between them and the movie ends. Now, if you haven't seen this film, I highly recommend giving it a look because it perfectly encapsulates the fear and the emotional trauma men experience when dealing with single mothers from both perspectives, as the biological father and the stepfather. Because in the beginning of the movie, you believe something is going on between Katie and Danny, and you continue to believe that up until the final moments, because Joe is an average looking single mother of two. She isn't drop dead gorgeous, rich, or a celebrity, yet somehow she's able to bag a doctor a decade younger than she is, a young doctor with no kids of his own, that's more attractive and seemingly more successful than her ex-husband. How? Where does something like that happen in the real world? And within eight months of dating each other, she moves him into her house with her kids. That was a reckless decision on Joe's part. She's moving like a crazy teenage girl. To every outsider looking in, it raises a series of red flags because there are predators who date single mothers just so they can get access to their children. And initially, that's what Danny looks like, a predator. How else could you explain an attractive young doctor dating an average looking single mother with no money? So yeah, I can see how Dez would be worried why he would assume Danny is after his children. Now he went too far by creating the illusion of improper behavior, which can cause problems down the road if Danny does do anything, but his concerns are legitimate. But I can also understand Danny's perspective. He's a man who's been wrongly accused of a heinous crime, one that society frowns upon. It doesn't get any worse than touching children. People are more willing to forgive a convicted murderer than a child toucher, and he doesn't have to be guilty either. The rumor alone is enough to destroy a man's reputation. And that's why Danny, even though he was innocent, was unwilling to talk to police. Because in those types of scenarios, you're guilty until proven innocent. Which is understandable because there's nothing more vulnerable than a child. Society should be overly protective. But damn, a lot of times the system gets abused. Just recently, there was a case of rappers FTN Bay and her ex, Duty Low. Yeah, I know, those names are stupid. But she, FTN Bay, falsely accused Duty or Doty, of touching her son, all because she was bitter over how their relationship ended. Now, Duty was able to clear his name, he got an apology from FTN Bay, and he won an $11 million defamation suit against her. My man. <laughs> but it took years for him to clear his name and he hasn't seen a dime of the defamation money because she doesn't have it and she's not gonna go to prison. Essentially, she's gonna get away with it. And we've all heard stories about stepfathers that were falsely accused by their stepdaughters. So the system isn't perfect. Innocent men have been destroyed by it, so I understand Danny's line of thinking. But fortunately for Danny, he had a happy ending. But most men aren't proven innocent over the course of a weekend. That's not how these scenarios play out in the real world. So I'm gonna close things right here, but before I go, follow me on my other social media platforms, and if you like this video, please share the link on your social media pages. That, more than anything, would be a huge help in getting the word out and growing this channel. But most importantly, check out the other videos in my library. I'm sure there's something there you will enjoy. Here's a preview of my latest work. So The Blind Side is an inspiring story based on true events. It's about a wealthy white family, the Tuies, that cross racial barriers and take in a poor black teenager from the projects who had no real family, no place to live, after they found him wandering the streets of Memphis. And they showed him love by giving him all the things he needed in life, things that a kid needs to be successful, things that he never had. 
They helped him get into a major university by teaching him how to play football and improving his grades, which springboarded him to where he is now, a retired NFL athlete who's earned millions of dollars during his career. It's a beautiful story of love, charity, and racial unity. The only problem is it's bull****. Aside from the broad details and the names of the characters involved, very little about this story is true. Michael Lore wasn't some shy, hapless, passive idiot who didn't know how to play the game of football. And Lee Ann Tui isn't some football savant that taught Michael how to play the game. And while they did provide a lot of help, they weren't the only ones who gave him a hand. Nor were they the reason why he made it to the NFL. Because Michael was a phenomenal athlete with a tireless work ethic, he would have made it regardless of their input. Now his path to getting there would have been more difficult, but it was going to happen. So let's start with Leanne Tui. And that's it. That's all I have to say about it. What do you have to say about it? Leave a comment in the comment section and let's have a conversation. Okay, so you've heard me say this a million times. So if you like this video, please give it a like and leave a comment in the comment section and share the link on your social media platforms. And if you are new to my channel, please subscribe and turn on that notification bell. That way you'll get alerts every time I upload a new content. This is The Layman's Journal. Thanks for stopping by. I'm out. Hell! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! And while I do appreciate you sharing, subbing, and leaving comments, I'm going to ask that you take another step further in keeping the channel going. I set up a membership plan for those of you who would like to offer further support in the development of this channel. It's not anything expensive or special, I'm just asking for 99 cents a month, which is enough for me to continue doing the work that I do here. Help me! Help me! N Help me! In the future, there will be additional tiers with added benefits, but for right now, I just need your support so that I can cover basic costs. So please, sign up so I can continue bringing you awesome content. This is The Layman's Journal. I'm out.